Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to go over some new features and enhancements in SQL Server 2012. I'll briefly talk about these features and in my next few videos, I'll demo their functionality. Here's a quick list of what I'll be covering. Most are enhancements for the DBA. There are some new enhancements for developers. So let's get started. We'll start with probably the most talked about new feature in 2012, and that's the always on availability group. It's a new high availability option and disaster recovery option for SQL Server. It takes pieces of functionality from database mirroring, replication, and clustering. Windows clustering is required for this to work. All nodes in the availability group needs to be in the same Windows cluster. Multiple databases can be added to an availability group. Failure of one database fills over the entire group. This is useful for applications that have multiple databases, like SharePoint. If one of the SharePoint databases fail, all the databases in the group fail over to the secondary server. Unlike database mirroring, you can set up multiple secondary databases, which are called replicas. Also, unlike mirroring, the secondary replicas can be configured to be read-only. So this gives you the ability to offload administrative tasks onto the secondary servers. For example, creating backups and running DBCC CheckDB. They can all be done without taxing the primary server. Since the secondary replicas allows read-only access, you can configure the always-on listener to redirect read-only requests to the secondary servers. 2012 also introduced contained databases, which are databases that are isolated from other databases on the server, and it's also isolated from the SQL Server instance. It includes all the database settings and metadata that define the database. It has no configuration dependencies on the SQL instance. Users don't need to authenticate against the SQL instance first. They can connect directly to the database. The settings and metadata are all contained within the database. So this makes it easy for administrators to move the database from one server to another. It doesn't depend on the tempdb or instance collation. Uh, for regular uncontained databases, when you create temp tables, they use the collation of the tempdb. For contained databases, though, it uses its own database collation. For things like variables and cursor names, an uncontained database would use the collation of the SQL instance. But in a contained database, it uses this new concept called a catalog default. A catalog collation is new in 2012. It uses this Latin one collation. It's the same for all contained databases and it can't be changed. There's two types of contained databases, full and partial. Fully contained databases are actually not available yet. Only the partially contained databases are available in 2012. With fully contained, there's no dependency on the SQL instance. It doesn't allow any objects or functions to cross its database boundary. With partially contained databases, uncontained features are still allowed. For example, Database users can still be mapped to the server login, or you can have references in your partially contained databases to tables in another database. Column store indexes is a nice new feature for those that do data warehousing. There are indexes that are created on columns rather than on rows. So the query optimizer first selects the columns needed in your query, then selects the rows. It works great when you're doing column-specific operations, like aggregations with max or count. 
and typically that's what data warehousing queries do they summarize large amounts of data even though these column store indexes can dramatically improve performance they are very rigid with lots of limitations some of these limitations are that tables can't be updated when they have a column store index it can't be created on views it also doesn't support row or page compression and it can't be used with replication or file stream so they're primarily designed for querying large data warehousing tables that are read only there is a new file table feature which is built on the file stream feature that was introduced in 2008. It gives you the ability to manage files on a file server through the special table in SQL Server. The table contains file and directory hierarchy information. Each row in the table represents a file or a directory and it contains the attributes of the files. So applications can use this to gain access to the file system to manipulate files if the name of the file is changed in the file table, the name of the file on the file server changes as well. Semantic search is essentially full text search with added intelligence. It builds on the existing full text search feature, but unlike full text search where it lets you query for words in the document, semantic search allows you to query the meaning of a document. It extracts key phrases and documents, and it helps you find and group similar or related documents. So if you were a headhunter, a recruiter, you can use semantic search to scan through a bunch of resume documents and find those that match your job description. Distributed replay. It's similar in a way to replaying profiler traces to test performance. But unlike Profiler, it allows you to capture a trace on one server and replay it on another server. It has these enhanced features that allow you to perform application compatibility testing, performance testing, and capacity planning. The auditing features were enhanced in 2012. SQL Server Audit is now available in all editions. In previous versions, it wasn't available in the standard edition. Also, users now have the ability to define their own audit specifications, giving them more control over what's written into the audit logs. There's also new filter options for querying the logs. In previous versions, only fixed server roles were available, like sysadmin and dbcreator. Now you can create your own server roles. It allows for more control and segregating duties among your company's different job functions. For example, the sysadmin server role has access to everything, including the SQL Server audit information. You can now prevent the sysadmin from changing anything in the audit or even viewing the audit information and only make it available for your security officer. An enhancement was made to the Database Engine Tuning Advisor. The Tuning Advisor helps you tune your database and improve query performance. It gives you recommendations on what changes should be made. Usually it's something along the lines of creating additional indexes. In previous versions, you gave it a workload either from the profile trace or a set of queries. Now there's an option to have it use the plan cache as the workload. Plan cache is previously known as the procedure cache. So this provides an easy way to tell the tuning advisor to make its recommendations based on the execution plans of your most frequently used queries. There are a number of T-SQL enhancements added in 2012. There's a new sequence object. It functions similarly to identity fields where it generates a sequence of numeric values. But unlike identity fields, the sequence, the way it increments, 
is based on the specifications that the user defines. It's also table independent, so you could use it across multiple tables. There's a couple new logical functions. The choose function returns the value at the specified index from a list of values. Here's a simple example. From this list of values, Peter, Paul, and Mary return the second value. The result would be Paul. The IIF function, which is an inline if function, works the same way as it does in Excel and in other programming languages. It evaluates a Boolean expression. If it evaluates to true, the first value is returned. If it's false, then the second value comes back. In this example, 1 is equal to 2 is false, so orange is returned. There are several new date and time functions introduced in 2012. The names of the functions give a pretty good indication of what they do. Date from parts, it takes parts of the date, the year, the month, the day, and returns the date value. Similarly, the date time 2 returns the date time 2 value, and so on. The last one here, EO month, is one that I find particularly useful. It returns the last day of the month. Another addition is the offset and fetch. These are additions to the overbuy clause and your select statement. It allows you to fetch a page of results or a subset of results from the result set. The offset clause specifies the number of rows to skip before it starts to return rows. And the fetch clause specifies the number of rows to return after the offset is processed. There are eight new window functions. These are analytic functions that are used with over and order by. I've listed them here for your reference. I'll go over them in more detail and do some demos in a future video. There's a few more enhancements I want to quickly point out. In previous versions, if you needed to rebuild indexes on a table that contained lob data, it needed to be done offline. Now, these indexes can be rebuilt online in 2012. Another enhancement is the number of partitions you can create on a table increased from 1,000 to 15,000 partitions. And the third point here, the requirement that all nodes in a cluster must be on the same subnet is no longer enforced in 2012. They can now be on separate subnets. So this concludes the overview of some new features and enhancements in 2012. In the next few videos, I'll demonstrate their functionality. Not for every feature mentioned here, but certainly for the major ones like always-on availability groups, contained databases, column store indexes, and several more.